everybody. I'm Sarah Cray and welcome to our Let's Make Art live paint along on Tuesday nights that we do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we have Michael here working the camera. Well, hello everybody. And um, that's my husband. So sometimes we, you know, tease and joke and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm so glad you guys decided to, to join us tonight. We are doing feathers. Ah. Ah. And I wanted to do a special welcome to Dorinda, I was watching the comment thread while we were waiting, and she says it's her first time joining us. So welcome, we're so happy to have you here, and we just have the best time together. So, um, do, 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 do. If you do not have your supplies ready, I'm gonna go over them really quick. So I am using cold press Hanamule paper, um, but use whatever paper you have. I am using three paints, indigo, lunar black, and burnt orange from Daniel Smith. If you do not have those paints and you have LMA paints, you can use indigo, burnt orange, and black <laughs> and salt. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and um, for paint brushes, I have my Princeton Velvet Touch Long Round 10 and my Let's Make Art Quarter Inch Dagger, but just a round brush, larger round brush, and a detail brush is really what you need. And bleed proof white. Always. I always have that handy. Okay, hopefully that gives you guys time to set up. Oh, uh, Liz, Lisa, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, um, from Australia. It's her first time live. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. You just got love from Sullivan's Island. Weren't you just there? Yes, I was just Laura? in... Laura. Oh, is that Laura? Laura? Yeah. Hi, Laura. I pinned it. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Hello. I was, it's so nice to paint with you again. Another Laura loves our countdown, Laura Jones. Oh, Laura Jones. Actually, Laura Jones gave me this palette. Wait, let me go. Isn't oh, this? That is so cute. Isn't this the most? She was like, I saw this and I thought of you. And I'm like, how do you know me so well that this is like <laughs> the most beautiful palette I've ever seen? So I'm painting with it tonight. Okay. Wait, and one more. I'm sorry. Yeah. Our daughter says, Ella, your daughter. That's all she wrote. <laughs> Ella, your daughter, I love you so much. All right. Now you can go. I'm sorry. Okay. Right. So, um, and if you guys don't know, I have my phone to the right here. That's why I keep looking to see the comments. I have the comments pulled up. So I try and pay attention to that while I'm painting, but that's why I kind of do this. Um, okay. So... Before we get started for our painting, I want to give you guys a heads up, which is, which is, which is, I wrote a, a watercolor book. The official published date was last Tuesday, a week ago exactly. And um, I had some pre-order bonuses um, that I decided to send out for people who pre-ordered. Um, and then I felt bad that people didn't get the pre-order bonuses and so i kept extending the deadline and i have to cut it off at some point so i wanted to give you guys a heads up that if you order my book watercolor your way by today the 12th and you fill out the google form then you are going to get all three bonuses now some of you might have gotten just the outlines maybe just the hummingbird you're not really sure what's happening all three are gonna be emailed tonight after this live at 9 p.m. And so you should have access to all three. It doesn't matter if you pre-ordered in August or if you ordered it today, as long as you have proof of order by today, then you're good to go and you will receive the bonuses. But then after that, I have to be done. We gotta cut this off somewhere, <laughs> my friends. The madness has to end. <laughs> Okay, now just to go over the bonuses, the first one was a video tutorial of the Hummingbird Project, which is probably my favorite project out of this book. Um, the second bonus is a PDF bundle of all of the outlines that use outlines in this book, just because it's easier to transfer than to try and trace out of a book. And then the third one is a surprise, and you'll find out what that is tonight in the email. Michael. Two questions from the comments. One, where do you get the book? Okay, that's actually trickier than you might think because it's actually sold out in a lot of places, but <laughs> I think you can still order on Amazon. And the other place that I've been linking to is called Books A Million. I feel like I maybe saw some on Walmart, but I wasn't sure. 
And, um, but it is sold out of bookshop, which is where I've been linking to a lot and Barnes and Noble, but you can just Google it, Google watercolor your way, Sarah Cray, look at for this cover. Uh, two, Marcia says this is the best book ever, except the Bible and maybe Dune. <laughs> uh, the, the, the second question is, where's the form? The form, the form can, to fill out for the bonuses. The form to fill out for the bonuses. Great question. This is such a great question because I need to give you guys some back history. I like I am a separate entity than Let's Make Art, right? So if you you think that the form would be on the Let's Make Art page, but it's not. It's actually on my own personal website called sarahcray.com. If you go to sarahcray.com, Michael, can you do a link to sarahcray.com? I can. Give me a second. In the top part, there's this in the in the in the top of a website, there's a whole section called watercolor your way. You click on that. You scroll to the very, very bottom, and there is this button that says um, pre-order bonus form here. Would you like me to link to the form or to your site? Both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that is where you get the form. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. See my face when I say this, this is low stakes. Okay. If you check your inbox and spam tonight and you don't see it, shoot me an email. I'll help you out. I'm in control of it. That's why I keep moving the date, really. It's because I like breaking rules. And so I'm like, sure, you can have it. Sure, you can have it. So I don't want you to stress. This isn't a stressful thing. Um, but I want to give you a heads up. Today's the last day, so please do that. And Michael. I would like to address something while we have everyone hostage listening. Yes. The form is a Google form. It is. I would love to own Google. I do not. Yeah. Google requires you to have a Google account to fill it out. It has nothing to do with anything else. You don't have to have a Gmail to do it. You just have to have a Google account to fill this form out. I'm sorry. We spent a couple hours trying to get around it. It is not a thing. So that's we, the limit. We spent so long trying to figure out how we could get this done easier. And this was the easiest way we could come up with. But honestly, it was still really hard. So we understand your frustrations if you're having trouble with the form. It might be confusing because it will say log into your Gmail or something like that. You do not need to create a Gmail email address, but you do need to create a Google account. And that can be done with any email address. With Hotmail. With Hotmail, your, Yahoo, yeah. whatever. Um, and it's free. So that is the trade-off for having to get these bonuses. I didn't know any other way. <laughs> your, your frustration pales to ours. Let me tell you. It's I'm been like, a ride. Why can't, it's been a wild ride. Why can't they just enter? Okay. So I think that's all the announcements I got to say. They're freaking out. They thought I did on Google. I know. Me too. I wish. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane. Okay. Um, so thank you for that. Thanks for all that. And also I'm going to be on, um, I think it's called great, great day, Kansas city tomorrow to talk about the book. Yes. It's going to be a live news broadcast just for a few minutes. And I'm freaking out. So freaking out <laughs> <laughs> because even though I do lives all the time, it's like, you guys are my friends. We're cool. You know what I mean? Like, no. this is good. I'm just hanging out with my paint friends, but to go on like, um, a station and talk to people and teach and like do a little demonstration who are like, who is this woman? Why is she making her, why is she making me take an oath? You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, but it's going to be fine because we can do hard things. So that's what I keep telling myself. And da -da -da. Uh, Jerry says, you're going to be great. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. We have a question. I pinned it, but you're. You were talking about something else. I'll ask it again. Um, someone ordered the book from Amazon Singapore. Do they still get the bonuses? Is that fine? Yes. Okay. It does not matter where you order from. Great question. doesn't matter where you order from. Amazon. Let's make art. Walmart. Target. Tim's Crab Shack. Tim's Crab. Your local bookshop. Any, if you even bought a Kindle version, that still counts. It still counts. What channels are you thinking on? Is it four? Channel I four, want to say Kansas four, City? but I could be very wrong. We're not native Kansas Cityans, and we haven't owned... Uh, actual like TV since we lived here. We're like Netflix people now. So I think it's four. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay. You guys ready to paint? Let's I'm ready to paint. paint. All right. So 
We are painting feathers and there's no outline today, which might scare some of y'all, but don't be scared because we can do hard things together, like I just said. So I'm going to show you the basic shapes that we are going to do before we get into painting, because essentially what we do is we draw with water first and then just drop in paint, which is very satisfying. So whenever I do feathers, I'm going to do my stem first. And so I'm going to sketch here just to show you the shapes. It's up to you if you want to sketch on your paper or not. Yes. We have to do the oath. It's important and people are asking for it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Like a lot of people. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> that's how freaked out I am about tomorrow. Is I also, let's, are your armpits sweaty? Don't show us. Okay. We don't need to talk about right. that. Yeah. What a rude thing to bring <laughs> up in front of so many of my friends. <laughs> okay. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Thank you very much. I found about this week. I'm, I'm rehired. Good job. Thank you. Okay, so now when I do my feather shape, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to do a stem. Usually my stem, stem, vein. Um, man, I've looked this up before. I'm going to look. Look it up again. So I'm going to draw my same one. And notice that it's a, a slight curve. I don't do just a straight line. I want it to have a soft curve because if you pick up a feather, most of the time they have a little bit of curve to them, right? And then the first shape that I do is it's narrow at the top. So it kind of comes to a point here and it goes out like so. Uh, that pointy part is called the hollow shaft or the calamus. I'm not going to remember that. Shaft. Shaft. Okay. So it's going to kind of... Quill. Sorry. It's okay. It's going to come to a point, come out, and then it kind of like goes back in at an angle like so. Okay? So this is the basic shape. But this is very structured, right? If you think of a feather, it doesn't have such hard edges and angles. So we keep this shape in mind, and then as we paint it, we kind of um, like soften the edges like so. And then we also have little chunks. So in order to put a little chunk in your feather, you're gonna go in and then come back to the line where it would have kept going. Does that make sense? Yes. And you can do big chunks. You can do little chunks. Like there's so much variation in feathers that it's okay if there's like a big chunk missing. It's actually okay. I've seen some feathers where sometimes the little individual ones curl down instead of curling up. Okay, so you have freedom here. Um, and then the other thing that we add after we kind of put in our basic shape, add the little chunks that are missing, the little floofy edges. Um, there's always these kind of curly cues right here. And this actually adds a lot. It gives it that kind of like fluttery feel. And if you were here when we did our dandelion dreams project and we did those kind of little things coming out of the center, it's like the same exact brush stroke, okay? So that's why we grabbed our um, dagger here because we can do that brush stroke really nicely. So that is one shape that we are doing. Okay. Michael, you I'm handling them. You feel in the comments about the bonus for? Uh -huh. You paint. I got you. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, dear. Okay, so that's the first shape. The second shape that we do is we're gonna do our main shaft. Is that right? Yeah, uh, you know what? I don't know about that part. Oh, that's what I was asking for. That part looks like it's called a oh no, that's a barb. Uh that's called a ratchet. <laughs> uh, yeah, shaft. <laughs> Here, we're going to look at a different picture. Okay. <laughs> the first part you talked about was called the quill. Yeah. That part's called the shaft. There you go. Okay, thank you. I was looking at a very technical biologist drawing. I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to avoid using those words, and I'm just going to say this part right here. And you guys will know what I'm talking about. So that is an overall oval, oval shape. The ratchet. Okay. So I'm going to do an oval on top of that. After I make my oval shape, then I can go through and do chunks missing. There's, it like kind of comes to a point, but not nearly as sharp and narrow as this top one. And then we do our little frillies. Okay, so that's shape number two. The last shape that we do, and notice we kind of repeat these two. These are the same shape, they're just going in opposite directions. 
This last shape that we do is also an oval, but it has a bigger belly. So it kind of rounds, kind of like a tongue. I, that's just what it, this looks like right here, it's like a tongue. Yeah. So it kind of rounds up right here, and so we still have that oval, nice rounded top, and then we put in our chunks. And don't forget the little curly, curly cues. They add a lot. That's called an aftershaft. This? No, the fuzzy part. Oh, aftershaft. Wait, let me make sure I got it. Yeah, quill, aftershaft, shaft. Fascinating terms we're learning here. <laughs> okay, so these are the basic shapes that we're doing. If you are just like, I cannot handle doing this. This is just too much and too fast. Um, then think about what you can do is maybe stick more with the oval shapes um, and then let it have like a little bit of a point at the top. But again, if you look at pictures of feathers, depending on where they come off the bird and what type of bird, there, there's just gonna be so many shapes. So I really don't want you to get too much in your head about it. Um, allow, allow the paint and the marks and the water to do the work for you, okay? Okay. So, that's our little drawing lesson, and now we'll get into painting. Now, I have my paper here on my pad. I am not gonna remove it and tape it down because um, I'm not painting edge to edge on this painting. And also, um, when I'm just doing illustrations on top, the glued portion to the pad is usually enough to keep my paper in place, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to place my feathers. So just, I'm gonna focus on just doing the shaft, which is the main part, right, dear? Correct. So I'm just gonna have one shaft go in here, and another one go in here, and another one go in here, and another one go in here. Okay, can they see that? Can you guys see that drawing? Yeah, visible. Okay. This is just to help with placement. And then now essentially what I'm gonna do is just do water to do pretty much everything else. But this way I kind of know like how much room I have to go out with the water and I can space and adjust from there, okay? Okay. You got a shout out from someone called Tree Hugging Buddhist that says, please tell Sarah hello from an OG. Hello! It's so great to see your name. Hello, thank you for joining us. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you sent us the bell. This bell? Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Even if you didn't, claim it, because... Claim yeah. it. There we go. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do this first top feather. So that's the one where, and I'm going to take water here. So, um using just water and my paintbrush, I'm going to create that shape. So it kind of comes out at about, what is that, a 45 degree angle? Oh yeah. 45. It's 42, and then it, 43 I'd say. And then it goes into a point. Okay. So again, I'm using just water here. So you can't really see what I'm doing. So please refer to the reference photo or the drawing. And then I'm going to take some burnt orange, mix with a little bit of my black, because it's just gonna create a different kind of orange. And I, while it's wet, I'm gonna put in these little stripes. And you'll see that the paint is just gonna move on its own. And I'm gonna let it, I'm not trying to control it. It's okay if I lose a little bit of the shape but look at that beautiful bleed. Like, as soon as that paint hits that water, it just kind of moves and does its own thing. After I do a couple of these, I'm gonna do a few dots, just along the bottom here. Okay? And then something that you can do that helps you is if you have a paintbrush that has a sharp tip on the end, so this is just a liner brush that I grabbed. You can use a card, you can use like anything that has kind of a sharp thing that won't cut your paper, is you can actually draw over the stem into the painting, and that will also keep that kind of vein in there, that mark. 
It's just something really easy that you can do that keeps that in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of that same mixture. So if you can see my palette here, I pulled a little bit of that color farther away and added some water so it's a nice light value. And then this is where I go in along the edges and kind of do some wispy textures. So I'm pulling color from what's there. If you want to do a chunk missing, you can. I don't know if this one needs it. The biggest thing to think about is that in sometimes if you look at a feather, you'll see the little thin wispies come out, but if they're super condensed together, the edge is actually smooth. It kind of turns into a smooth line. So make sure that you have some wispies and then also a line that is pretty smooth because that's how we experience feathers as well. And I think that variation um, is important. And then if you want, because who doesn't like to live on the edge? Well, it's wet here. You can do just another drop of that color right on top. And it might be dry enough that it stays there. It might be so wet that it still moves. One is not better than the other. Now, I'm gonna switch to my dagger and I'm gonna do these kind of frillies. at the end here. If you don't have a dagger, you can use a liner for round two. Okay. I feel like it needs like a little bit more of that lunar black. Now the nice thing about lunar black is that it is a granulating color, which means that the pigment separates once you put it down, which is how I get some of these kind of like speckled textures in this. Do you see that? Uh -huh. So um, if you don't have granulating paints and you don't have these exact colors, you can throw some salt in there and see how salt will add just a bit of texture to your feathers. You don't have to, not everybody is a huge fan of salt textures, but I love a little texture with my watercolor painting. I just think it really adds to it. Okay, let's actually do a couple of the... Marcy says, <clears throat> my husband took my dagger brush away. I guess he didn't think that me running around trying to stab people with it at the time was as funny as I did. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, Marcy, no. That's funny. Okay, that's it. That's the first feather. Now we'll go back in at the end. So basically we're gonna paint each feather individually, let it dry, and then we'll go back in at the end and add details on um, the shaft and any kind of wispy extra stuff that we want to do. Okay. I've said it a thousand times because I've watched you paint a thousand times. I'm always impressed that it goes from a single line, <laughs> a pencil line to this, like, looks exactly like a feather. It blows my mind. Well, thank you. Yep. Okay. So our next one is mostly white. So I want to make sure, um, I mean, you can use water the water that you have if you have some another jar of water grab it what honey uh, there's also a petition going around to use the word stem instead of shaft i really support that thank the you stem. the stem thank you <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> i wasn't trying to say anything about it i didn't want to make it weird because i'm like if that's what it's called we're doing it but um thank you so much so we're gonna paint the stem, <laughs> the stem. <laughs> okay so for our next one, remember, this is the one that's mostly an oval shape that has a little bit of a point, not as narrow as the top one, but a little bit more. So I'm going to take my round 10 and using just water, I'm going to do an oval shape, kind of paid attention to how wide it goes out. And then this is the best part. I'm going to take my indigo, which is a color I just love. And look at that. Oh. <gasps> Can you even deal? So 
Beautiful. Give it a... Just... <laughs> Just appreciate it for a second because it's so beautiful. And then while it's wet like this, I'm going to take my sharp point of my brush or a card or whatever, and I'm going to draw the vein or the stem kind of over it. I mean, look at that bleed. It's just so beautiful. Okay, but now I have to kind of put in other colors because you can't really see anything from here, right? right? So I'm gonna take a little bit of my lunar black and a little bit of my indigo and add some water onto it so it's a little, um, a lighter value. And I'm going to just kind of add the little swoop curls along the edges using this color. Now, it's okay if you might have a little bit extra blue, a little bit extra black, Maybe you still have some burnt orange on your brush. That is okay. There's so much variation in colors on feathers that, see, like, I just had a little extra blue on there. That's okay. What brand is that indigo color? This is uh, Daniel Smith that I'm using, all of these colors. Um, the Let's Make Our Indigo is such a beautiful color if you have it. Um, if but it might be a little grayer than this one. So if it's not as blue as you want it to be, there's nothing wrong with mixing in another color here. And this is the fun thing about this project. You can do this using any supplies, any colors, and they're gonna turn out awesome. Now I am missing a little bit of warmth. I don't know, it feels like it needs a little bit of that warmth. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of the orange mixed with the black. So it's kind of like a brownish. And just kind of put that a little bit while it's nice and wet, just kind of drop it in. Now, if this is one of your first times painting with me or you're used to the tutorials and being able to pause, you might be like, whoa, 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 we're going so fast. And we are, we are painting very fast, but I don't want that to scare you. If anything, I want you to mentally kind of separate from this painting and just kind of work quickly, try and follow along and keep pace simply because when you work quickly, it teaches you to make decisions quickly. And the faster you make the decisions, like the more you can just respond to what's there instead of kind of um, stressing out about each brushstroke. That's not what this project or painting is about. We are not being too technical here. We're just going for it, okay? Now I'm gonna switch to my dagger and I'm gonna pick up that same kind of light value that I've been using, and I'm gonna put in the little plus. Wispies. The wispies. And they kind of go everywhere, and some are thick and some are thin. I have a very open-ended question, Sarah. Okay. Uh, Darlene says, she was never good with doing wet on wet, she's gonna give it a try again. Do you have any just general tips for, I don't know, what to, what to practice on wet on wet? Is, is there anything that you specifically might do? I don't know. Tips. Okay. Wet on wet. It's a very open-ended question. No, no, no. Wet on wet is one of my favorite things in the entire world. Um, but it does take a little bit of practice, especially because like, if you have too much water on your paper, it will just puddle and it won't move. Um, if you... If you were to buy my new book, Watercolor Your Way, <laughs> um, I specifically talk about wet on wet and I have an exercise in there on what you can do, but it's very similar to um, projects that I've done here with Let's Make Art before. And that was on purpose because I feel like there are some projects that I've done where I'm like, oh yeah, this is a great one. And this is an excellent way for people to learn this skill. And so if you want to practice wet on wet, try and find the carrots tutorial. Um, that is an excellent one to practice wet on wet. Also, I do like these rainbow dots. I can't remember if I ever did a full tutorial on it or if it was just like tips, but if you are still having trouble, um, message me and I'm going to, we're going to figure this out together because wet on wet is such a joy that I would hate for someone to not be able to experience it. Um, just because they're having trouble with like consistency or something. Is that helpful? That's perfect. That's perfect. I'm sorry. I'm, Semi non responsive. I'm, I'm commenting. No, you're commenting doing... back to peeps. You're doing great. Okay. 
And let's say you put like a dark value down here and you're like, whoa, that doesn't match everything that I have going on here. You can do two things. You can just blend it out using water and it will smooth out. Or you do that dark mark other places more and then it looks like it's on purpose. And now it doesn't feel so alone. So it's up to you. Gosh, I just love how that blue just bled through. So beautiful. Okay. Moving on. Third feather. This is the one that's a little bit sharper, okay? So I have my round 10. Um, and I'm actually gonna paint with this orangey color water. Maybe that will help you guys see what I'm doing a little bit better. So hopefully you're using clean water, but I'm gonna show you with kind of a wash on my brush so you can see the marks that I'm making. So I wet the area first, and then I go at a 45 degree angle off both sides. And then I narrow in back to the top. And if it's easier to get these gaps by kind of moving your brush on the side like this and working to the tip, you could do it that way too. And it's okay, like I usually start a little bit smaller and then make it bigger as I add color. So I'm gonna take some of my black Oh, look at that. While it's bleeding out, um, my daughter Ella wants all of you watching to know that you guys are great at painting and she believes in all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ella. Thanks, Ella. You're, you're so sweet. And I'm going to do some black sections. And they don't have to be, um, what's the word when it's the exactly the same on both sides? Mirror? Symmetrical. It does not have to be symmetrical. Like, you can have a black chunk here and an orange chunk here. Like this one, this feather is a little bit wonky. This one is, it's it's doing its own thing. So really just go with the flow on this one and kind of just see what comes up. Just kind of make marks. Now with the granulating color, what you might notice is that the pigment spreads out so much that the values don't stay dark. Like the black, look how much that black turned to gray because that color started to just kind of granulate out. That's, the paint doing its job. So there's nothing wrong with it, but you might have to do a couple of layers if you want it to stay nice and dark. And now I kind of did like a really uneven edge on this. So I'm gonna go through and just kind of like smooth it out. Just a little bit, not everywhere, but just so kind of my lines match up a little bit more. This is such a deep callback and three people in the audience are gonna respond to this, but this feather reminds me of the movie, The Rescuers Down Under, where they're in Australia, and they get that big eagle, and the bad guy wants the feather. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, Is that... yes, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's what this feather reminds me of. Marahute, the great golden eagle. It's so pretty. I love these colors too. So earthy. And then switch to my dagger and do my little wisp textures along the bottom here. Oh, I forgot to do my little vein. You can do that now. Now, if you're trying the vein thing and you are not liking it, you don't have to put it in. You see how it just kind of creates that dark line? Yes. So it's if you have trouble like with a liner brush or doing a nice thin line, then using the end of your paintbrush if it has a point is really an easy way to go about doing that. But it doesn't have to be for everybody. You know, some people are just like, nah, not for me. And that's fine too. <sighs> Look at these colors. <laughs> Look at how they're like moving. And I just, they're so, I just am so happy with the texture of them. It kind of looks like um, rock a little bit. Sarah Cray, are you a fan of pan palettes, like pre-made, you know, metal tray palettes? Do you like those? Yes. 
All right. <laughs> and that's, there you go. There it I is. don't know what else to say. <laughs> yes, I do. I will, I will admit that I don't tend to go for those because I really like having control of what colors are in my palette. And so usually pre-made pan sets, um, I don't, they're expensive and I don't know if I'm going to use all of those colors. So I like to make my own and to make your own, you can just buy the empty squares and squeeze tube paint in there so you can make your own palette. I will say though, that one time I ordered a pre-made set from a small business called the ocean paper. And I was nervous cause it, it's expensive paint. And, but I was just like, you know what? I'm, I've been drooling over these paints forever. I'm just going to order them. And I'm going to challenge myself to stay within this palette that she has already curated for me. And I did, I, I did an entire sketchbook filled with those paints and it turned out beautiful. It was an excellent exercise for me to be limited in my color choices because I usually like a really warm bright yellow and that wasn't in the palette there was a yellow but it was very um kind of like an ochre it wasn't super vibrant but that was great because then I had to practice bringing warmth using other colors and like all of that kind of stuff so there is value to it and I do like them I just don't buy them often because I like to have control of what colors are in my palette all right Great to know. Okay, last one. Now this is the one that is an oval shape, but has a more tongue top. It reminds me of a corn dog. If you will. Oh, I totally can get behind that. Our corn dog feather. All right, so I'm gonna take my round 10. I'm going to paint an oval. And then right at that top, I'm gonna make it nice and round. And at the bottom, it's kind of round too, but it's a little bit more narrow than the top, okay? And then of course, I'm gonna mix all the colors in this one, so I'm gonna do blue at the top. Sarah, I'll give you $8 to scoop that up a few inches. Oh, yes. Ready, a little bit more? More? Yeah, right there. Okay, yeah, look at this. Look at that color bleed. It's so beautiful. And then let's throw in some orange here. And it's okay if the orange and the blue mix, like it's gonna create some funky colors and we're just gonna let it do its thing. We're not gonna try and control it too much. This is where we really let the water color and the water do the work for us. I'm not trying to, you know, like make sure that these colors don't mix. I don't wanna do that. I want to have freedom and instead of trying to make sure every little thing is exactly how I want, I can say, what if I appreciate what's happening on my paper instead of trying to look for reasons why not to like it? Look at those, look at, I just. <sighs> Marcy asks, Sarah, what are you gonna do with your $8? Well, obviously buy snacks, Marcy. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know me. <laughs> You know me better than that. <laughs> uh, Love and Life says she would love to see your sketchbook filled with the ocean paper paints. She's painting with them right now and loves them. Okay, here, I will tell you, if you go on my Instagram, I have a little highlight called Good Morning. <laughs> okay. Because I used to do a painting every morning and on Instagram it would be my story, Good Morning. You know, so you can flip through those. Just about every single one of those is done with the ocean paper paints. Just about every one. So you can nice. you can take a look. Take a gander. Okay. Marcy figured it was snacks. I, she knows me. And I'm going to do a little feather edge on some of these pieces. And I'm not going to touch that because I really love the color blending that's happening there. I'm not going to mess with it. And let's grab our dagger and do some wispies. The dagger for paint, not people. Yes. Melissa loved your Good Morning series. Oh, thank you. I need to do it again. That was, that was during the time where I had like the most projects simultaneously. I was working on the book, Watercolor Your Way, the landscape workbook, the monthly box, the National Parks box. It was like seriously five different projects at once. Like the Christmas stuff too, the Christmas card. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. It was another bonus box 
And what kept me going was treating my creativity first. And what I mean by that is we think that sometimes we have to get all of our work done to be rewarded. And I don't know if you want to go front facing because I'm going to talk for a second. There we go. I'm like, can you put it on my face, please? I'm having a moment here. (laughs) I just mean that like, I knew that I had a lot of projects due that needed a lot of my creative mental power because I wanted them to be so great for you guys. And I wanted to put all of myself in there. And sometimes we approach fun as a reward. We have to get all of our work done first and then we can have fun. But unfortunately, when we do that, that's how we burn out. And so I approached it the opposite way where I said, no matter what deadlines I have, I am going to do this free morning journal painting session just for me. No projects are in here. This is just me exploring my journal and my paints. And I'm going to do that every morning. And when I was able to do that, I was energized enough to be able to get my work done. And so this is my um, like warning or advice to you guys that do not put fun and play and creativity last. Because if you do, you will never get to it. You need to prioritize it. That is what fills your cup so you can keep going. That is what makes it possible for you to enjoy your day. It's just having that moment of prioritizing yourself. So um, I, I love that journal and I love that series and I love that it worked. That I was just like, shoot, I got so much I gotta do. How am I gonna get through this? And I thought, I'm gonna try this and it worked. And um, I just, and the paintings I did in there, I just love them so much. So this is me giving you that advice that I hope that you're able to do that too, at least at some level. Okay, you can go back to the painting now. <laughs> uh, Casey says sometimes she feels like she owes you a copay because this is just as good as therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I will accept that actually. $8 for snacks. $8 for snacks. I take Oreo thins. <laughs> oh my gosh. She destroys <laughs> sleeves of Oreo thins. They last one day in our house. They're the perfect texture. The perfect texture. Okay. There we go. That is all four of my feathers. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Is that in frame still? Uh, uh, let me look. Sorry. You're fine. Think. You're good. Yes, it is. Okay. Now we are going to move on and do the detail marks. So I have some bleed proof white here and I'm going to put some dots on this last, you okay? Yep. On this last feather. So I'm going to take my round 10 and just using the tip, I'm just going to do splotches. Okay. And your paint might be wet enough still that these splotches are kind of blending out. That's okay. I think that's a really cool look. Or maybe they're staying nice and tight because your painting has dried. That also is a very cool look. So go with the flow on these. And you can do as many or as little dots as you want. It's your painting. I need one in the center. I was avoiding the center. Feels good. And then I'm gonna basically look at these other things and see how they dried. This one dried, I think the colors are really lovely, but I'm missing some of that darkness. So I'm gonna go back over with some more lunar black and um, burnt orange and just kind of like put in some darker areas on here. Not on the whole thing, maybe just on some of it here and there. Anita has a good question, and I'll weigh in, and then you can weigh in, Sarah. She says, I'm a gardener, and it'll be prime season, but I want to paint. Also, I have people that want me to make copies and sell my prints. Help. Advice. And I would say just, like, don't burn yourself out, one. And two, if you schedule things, you can accomplish more in your day than you think. You know, I like doing stuff outside as well, and I have other stuff to do, but I don't know. Okay, so what was the, what was the question? Sorry. That's coming up on growing season. They want to be outside gardening a lot. Yeah. But they love painting, and also people want them to make copies and sell their prints. They just feel overwhelmed. Okay. Well, the biggest question is, do you want to make copies and sell your prints? That's a good question. Yeah. Because just because somebody wants you to make copies and sell your prints, does that mean you should? So, um, 
I would say when we get really good at something, people pressure us to do it, to make money so they can have a copy, all of that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally normal. And it's really, it feels really good when someone wants to support you in that way, but um, do not let it overshadow your passion and love for it. If you don't want to do that, then don't do it. If you do want to do it, then the biggest, the best thing to do is just to um, like schedule your time. Like Michael said, I mean, um, this is kind of funny. I had a someone, a high schooler, or she was in middle school. I can't remember. She emailed me and said, you know, what's the, as someone who wants to be an artist when they grow up, what is the best advice you can give? And it's not a very mm, cool answer, but the reality is you need to develop a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A discipline. Mm. So like, we don't, we don't create only when inspiration strikes. You make, you schedule the time to be there and you do your work and you get it done. Don't forget the play. So if it's more just like on two of the days you paint and the other days you're outside gardening, that works great. If you're like, I actually don't really feel like making prints for you right now because I want to be outside of my garden, do that. Another fun thing is uh, charge way too much money. Yes. Be like, okay, a painting is 30000 And then if they, <laughs> if they really want it, you know what? You could take a break from gardening for thirty grand. you know? Yeah, Why that's not? right. That's right. <laughs> Sue Yen says that uh, you helped her Sue finish Yen. her PhD. Oh, Sue Yen, it's so great to see your name. Uh, she's so amazing. I just, we've become little social, social media pals. And it's so great to see her journey. And she's just so supportive and kind. So thank you, Sue. Okay, so I'm just kind of darkening some of these areas. And then if you want to do like fun little dots, do fun little dots. There's dots on feathers, spots, speckles. There's got to be somewhere. There is for sure. I looked at pictures. In and around the shaft area. We're calling it the stem. The stem area. Someone put Sir? LMA after dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Okay. I'm a little warm in here right now. I'm, I know, but I've, I've been laughing. Yeah. Okay. So the very last thing that we want to do here is we are going to want to do our end of our stems. So I'm basically just going to mix my three colors together to get kind of a brownish. And then using my dagger brush or any small brush, I'm going to put the end in. It's a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to take water and just kind of pull that color till it meets the feather. Some can be lighter than others. Some can be darker. Remember, they also are different from each other. So they don't all have to be the exact same color. My stem got a little crece. So I'm going to redo that. People want to know about the New York Times list. I replied to her, but I, we probably won't know for a couple of weeks. Yes. They run a couple of weeks behind. Like they just released the bestsellers for the very beginning of the month. I think. I, I think, mean, like, yeah. I would hope that the publishers would tell me as soon as they found out, unless it's bad news. And they're just <laughs> like, never mind. We're just not going to let her know. She didn't make it. You that's... made the bestseller list of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> like there that's that could be totally possible. So I really don't know how to find out that information. I'm kind of at the mercy of my publishers. Okay. Now the last thing that we want to do is create a little bit of a highlight wherever that vein went through or stem went through our leaf. Now on some of these, it's dark from where we dragged our um, end of our brush, which is great. That's kind of what we want. So we want a dark line. I'm gonna kind of just softly put that in. And we also kind of want um, a little bit of a highlight because what we're really looking at is if you look close at what that feather is, is it's a round kind of hard piece. And so the reason why there's a shadow and a highlight is because it's a round hard piece in there. It's not totally flat and it's not like the vein of a leaf, it's actually like a separate kind of thing. So we have to account for that three-dimensional form. So I'm gonna take a little bit of bleed-proof white and my dagger, 
and just next to the shadow that I put in or the dark line, either above or below, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes you might accidentally go over it, that's okay too. And it just kind of gives that little highlight look. Like so. Okay. And then this is where we take a step back and be like, where do I need to put any more details? I felt like I have a little bit more details in this feather, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that with my dagger. And when I use my dagger, I'm kind of holding it. If I want a thin line, I'm holding it so the longest part of the brush is just touching, like so. Or if I want like a curve, I hold it so the angle right here is kind of straight down. And I use that full belly. While we're doing feathers, um, Debbie Martin says that she needs to paint her macaws tail feathers. <gasps> Macaws are so beautiful, and I have a fun little fact. I just watched a show about birds, uh, speaking birds. I thought this was the cutest fact, but um, they don't really know what we're saying, but they know that they like to sing to each other. That's how they communicate. They assume that humans are just singing to each other all the time, and they're just trying to learn our songs. So when you adopt a bird... They're just trying to sing to you how you're singing, and I think that's the cutest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> They're just trying to sing to you. Love it. <clears throat> Sarah, where's yes. that little palette from? We need a, a recourse. So, the sad thing about this palette, this was a gift okay. from Laura. Laura Jones. So, thank you so much, Laura. Um, she said the Etsy shop closed. Oh. I know. Travesty. I know. Okay, now what I'm noticing here, and I want to pull this out. Um, do you guys notice a pattern I have going on in this feather? Burn, 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 burn. It's totally symmetrical. And I don't want it to be. It can be. There's something wrong with it, but like, let's mess some of this up. Sarah, I have such a good thing to read you. What? I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. B. Gilbert? Says, uh, my profession is an opera singer. When COVID hit, all concerts were canceled. I happened upon LMA and Sarah looking to fill that gap. Never having watercolored, I have never looked back. Now it's all I want to do. Oh, first of all, amazing that you're an uh, opera singer. Seriously. And how scary during COVID. And I'm so happy you found something that you love. That makes me so happy. Thank you for sharing that. Felt like being a little edgy and throwing in some dark blue in the center there. Wow. I might be messing with this feather a little too much. Fussing is, it. We call it fussing it. Yeah, this might be a time where I'd be like, Sarah, <laughs> stop it. You need to stop. And then I just say one more, one more. Sarah's a natural fusser. She does it with our kids. She's always <laughs> like picking their face hair, moving their eyebrows. I'm like, Sarah, stop fussing them. He always yells at me because I always check on our youngest Arlo before we go to bed to make sure he's okay. And I just like make sure the covers are on him, everything's fine, and Michael peek in. No. Stop busting him. She doesn't. No, she scoots him around. Because he's about to fall off the bed, okay? <laughs> he's gonna fall off the bed. I gotta move him. No, she's busting him. <laughs> <laughs> they like the warmth you added to that one versus the original. It's a hit. Okay. Oh, yeah, I like that too. It still is a little bit maybe too symmetrical for me, but I'm gonna let it go. Carol says, step away from the painting. Oh, Carol. I will listen to you, Carol. Thank you. And um, that's it. It's beautiful. That is our feather. And um, this, I, I love this project because I find it to be so freeing. Um, and it's an excellent way for you to explore and be brave with your creativity. It's wet on wet. You can go back in and add details after. You can get to know color palettes. Like if you need a project that's just kind of feel good, low key, and just kind of want to explore, um, don't underestimate the power of just painting some feathers can do. You can make them big and small. You can do three. Like there's so many adjustments that you can make to this to make it yours. And it's so satisfying. These are the type of projects that I love because 
I get so excited while I'm painting them that once I put that blue in and it just, it just is like, yes, this is why I love watercolor. This is what makes me fall in love. And I, and I want to keep going and I want to keep painting. And it's when you fall in love with the process of something, you will always get to where you want to go. Because when you enjoy the process, you keep doing the process. And when you keep doing the process, you improve. And it doesn't feel like that every day, which that's how it goes. Some days you're going to struggle. Some days, even though this is supposed to be relaxing, you're going to be like, forget this. And it might even end up in the trash, but who cares? Because you're going to paint again. And if you take a step back and you look at your paintings over months and years, you will see improvement. That's just how it goes. And, um, I just was, it was so fun to revisit this project again because I did feathers years and years ago in the beginning of LMA and I don't think I've touched them since. And it just was a joy. It just reinvigorated me. So um, thank you for painting with me and watching this. And um, you guys wanna see what we're painting next week? Heck yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, spring is in the air. In Missouri and so I wanted to do a spring project here put it down I'll do the talking okay wow love it it's so fun this one's actually very quick um, I will post the supply list tomorrow of what you need for it if you don't have everything that's okay use what you have and um, I'm really excited. So hopefully next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central, Central Time, um, we'll paint that together. All right. All right. Well, I guess uh, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. Please remember to order your book and throw in your form because I'm about to go prep that email to send send out all three of those bonuses. Please remember to share your work in the Facebook group. It is so fun to see, go into that Facebook group and see all of you guys painting the same project. It is, it just feels like we're actually painting all together. And one of the best things about painting with people is being able to see their interpretations and their try. And I know that's scary and vulnerable, um, but you guys can do hard things. And it's when we share our work that we get more brave to keep sharing our work, to encourage other people, and to be kind to ourselves. That's just a way to practice the oath that we take. We're not sharing our work to compare. We're not sharing our work to be down on ourselves. We're sharing it so people can see the variation in creativity. When you only see mine and compare it to mine, that's not fair. We're on a different path and journey. Um, but it's really wonderful to see how other people approach the same thing. And especially with wet on wet, the variation you can get. And you can ask, how did you do that? What colors did you use? I love your technique. And I love to see it because I learn from you too. I love to go through and be like, oh my God, wow, I didn't even think to use this color or these, these things together. So it's just an opportunity to learn and it's a really fun way to connect. So if you're not part of the Facebook group, join that. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor and um, then post your work and be kind to other people who also post in their work. Be nice. <laughs> be nice, please. Michael, did you have your arm raised for a bit or no? Uh, yeah, but I forgot why. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was talking. So it's okay. okay. That's, what, that's why I come. Yeah, watch you talk. So, okay. <laughs> well, it works out great. Okay, well, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for paying with me. I appreciate you.